Today's video is about milking the thorium cow. It's an amazing piece of science. Before we start, there are two or three things that I need to tell you so you can understand quite how fantastic it is. The first thing is that to treat cancer, one can use highly radioactive atoms which are taken to the tumour by complexing them, that's binding them to a protein that is attracted to the tumour rather than the rest of the body. The second point is that when a radioactive element decays, the product of the decay can be far more radioactive than the original atom that decays. You can have thorium that's not very radioactive decaying into something that's much more radioactive. And the third point, just before we start, is that when you have a really radioactive atom, even a nanogram, that is 10 to the minus 9 of a gram, a thousand millionth of a gram, has more than a hundred times as many atoms as there are cells in your body. So you need only a tiny amount of this highly radioactive material to give a really big dose to the tumour. So Brady was at the Oak Ridge National Lab in Tennessee in the United States and he was given a tour by Rose Boll who is an expert in the handling of these highly radioactive elements. Uh, we are at building 7920. This is the small hot cell room. We call them caves. This is where we do a lot of our medical isotope purification or the starting part of it, and we'll show you the rest of it later. Some of the material we work with is very highly radioactive, and so we need shielding to protect us from the dose that comes from that material. So we work with it with remote handles. This is Jay who is doing the operation of the remote operators here. We call them um, manipulators. And he's going to show us the thorium-229 cow that we use to milk our medical isotopes from. The guy who was doing it looked like a magician. It was amazing how he could manipulate these robot arms. Do you think you'd be good at it? I'm sure I'd be terrible. The thorium is uh, dissolved in nitric acid. That's how we store it. We don't want to take it back to the solid. It becomes a very uh, insoluble oxide. So we keep it in liquid solution. The thorium cow is a sample of thorium-229. They thought it was just waste, but then they suddenly realized this fantastic application. And it's called a cow because it keeps on giving more and more actinium just in the same way that a cow keeps on giving milk. But the difference is you don't have to feed the thorium, but you do have to feed a cow. Yeah, this is old material, but at the time that it was made, we didn't have a medical isotope application. So this was something that would have been thrown away as waste material that we were able to go and recover something very useful out of it. The chemistry, or perhaps the physics behind it, is that thorium-229 gives out an alpha particle which has mass four and contains two protons. So you go two elements to the left, to radium, and then the radium gives out a beta particle, that's an electron, and it goes one element to the right and you get to actinium. The first stage of the milking is to remove the thorium from solution so that you can then process the actinium. And they do this with a resin, a solid acid, which is something like this material here. This is also a solid acid. Essentially, tiny pellets of polystyrene which have been treated so they have acid groups on it. See the columns? He's pulled that rack out. I don't know if you notice it was up against the wall to start with. Our thorium, we run it through that column to separate it from the actinium. That's an anion exchange column. It has a glass frit on the top that holds the resin down for when we dump water on top, it doesn't disturb the resin bed. 
and um, it's stored with water on it right now until we go to do the next run, the next separation run. So there's, there's nothing radioactive in there at the moment. You're not sort of milking anything there at the moment. That's just No, not in that column. In right. fact, we keep our uh, radioactive material off of the column between runs because it, the radiation will destroy the resin. So now they have a solution which contains actinium and some radium. They put it through a series of other columns to purify it with resins and they adjust the acidity of the solution so that first of all the radium is removed and eventually all they're left with is pure actinium. And today we're packaging it in small glass V-vials in order to ship it to the customer. So over on this next place here, this is where they're doing the evaporation of the material. They are only going to produce a sample of about a nanogram a nanogram is such a small amount of material that you can't actually see it. The problem is that whoever is going to buy it needs to know where it is. So they use a bottle which has a V-shaped bottom, conical bottom. So as you concentrate the liquid, it goes right down to the bottom. We try to evaporate it down in the V part, the very bottom, because the customers usually dissolve this up in about 100 or 200 microliters of solution, which is about two to three drops. They evaporate it and you get the bottle and right at the bottom is a tiny bit of actinium. So the question is, how do they know if they've got any there? And they have an extraordinarily cunning piece of kit, which they call the gamma ray camera, which measures some of the gamma rays that are given out by the actinium when it decays. A gamma ray is like a light beam or a photon of light, but with very short wavelengths. So it will go through a lot of materials, including through the shielding at the front of the box. Another way you can see the element is that as it decays, it actually gives out a glow of blue light. The glow is pretty weak. So if you want to photograph it, you have to switch out all the lights and do a long exposure. Uh, they're bagging out the dried um, actinium-225. So we took it to complete dryness in those glass vials. So she'll work it all the way down to the bottom of the bag, and then they'll run a heat seal across there. The plastic is melted there into a band. I should say, they sell the bottle for a thousand dollars. Just wait a moment. A thousand dollars for one thousandth of a microgram means that you would have to pay a thousand million dollars for a gram of this material. Of course, you couldn't make a gram of this material and it would be so radioactive that nobody could handle it. But that just gives you an idea of the sort of price of this material. They use it to make medications and so the med this is actually they tell me is one of the less expensive ingredients necessarily in the final medicine once they get it made. We're very motivated by the fact the application. Everybody knows somebody who's had cancer or some family member that has cancer and is dealing with that. So we're very excited to be able to work with something that we know gets immediate application. You know, a lot of the research that we do down the road, it might develop into something. But ours, it goes out weekly for patients to be treated. So it's very nice being that closely connected with the product. <laughs>